In this video, I'm going to talk about two French sound poetry currents that mark the shift from the sound poetry performed with the voice to the sound poetry performed through a tape recorder to the use of technology. Lettrisme and poésie sonore. Lettrisme was founded by Isidoro Isou. He wrote a manifesto in 1942, when he was still living in Romania, and he arrived in Paris in 1946. He interrupted a performance by Tristan Sara play, shouting, Dada is dead and Lettrism is taking its place. Very soon other poets will join, like Gabriel Pomeran, Maurice Lemaitre, Gilles Bodman, and François Dufresne. Lettrism, in common with Futurism, transcended poetics. They wrote about theatre, cinema, painting, even philosophy and economics. And in common with Dadaism, they thrived in polemic and scandal, mainly Isidoro Isou. They use letters as sounds, but also letters as image. They call these new pieces hypergraphics, in which they wrote letters, words, syllables, punctuation marks, with graphics, symbols, handwriting and drawings. They saw letrism as a part of a continuum. And to understand that, we have to understand two concepts, amplification and chiseling. For letrists, any art form goes through a process of establishing itself, thus the process of amplification. For them, in French poetry, that was reached with Victor Hugo. After that starts the new process, called chiseling, and that's a process of self-destruction and reducing. That process was undertaken by Baudelaire, Rimbaud, Verlaine, Mallarmé, and reached the final stage with Lettrism. The process of reducing involves passing from the poem to the sentence to the word to the syllable to end in the letter. Lettrism, in this sense, is the final stage in the evolution of poetry. Like other sound poetry currents and movements and artists, they rejected semantics, the meaning of words. Their main innovation is that they transcended the conventional alphabet. They created new alphabetic sounds. In 1947, Isidoro Isou created 19 new vocal body sounds and transcribed them using Greek letters. In 1950, he added more sounds, transcribed them with numbers. This is a very interesting innovation by the letrists. They added new alphabetic sounds to the conventional alphabet. But in doing so, they are pointing out to the problem. The problem that sound poets were still using a finite, limited number of sounds. And that is what prompted some letterists to splinter and create a new group. The ultra letterists François Dufresne, Jill Boatman and others, they didn't want to accept this limitation. François Dufresne was the most clear example of the transition to technology. He created a unique kind of performance with his raw voice and symphonic units recorded in a tape recorder that he called Cree Rhythms. François Dufresne had also another point of contention with Isidoro Isou because later on he will use some kind of semantics, a new kind of semantics in which he used words, splicing them, used in a nonsensical way, quite reminiscent of the Finnegas Wake by James Joyce. Like in his piece, Le Tombeau de Pierre Larousse. François Dufresne also opened the door to the use of technology 
and poesy sonore. A term coined by Henry Chopin, the main lead artist in this movement. A poetry that used the full potential of technology in a creative way. He was a promoter, editor, organizer. He published a magazine called OU that accompanied with LPs of sound poets. He organized international festivals of sound poetry, and he also published the first comprehensive history of sound poetry. As well as a promoter of sound poetry, he was an artist. His work at first was still attached to the word, to the letter, like in his piece Soul Air, but very soon all his work was made by and for the tape recorder. The tape recorder and the microphone made possible for the first time that the sound poet doesn't have to be using only his own vocal mouth body to perform. From now onwards, the sound poet can record his voice. It can be slowed down, it can be edited, and sound effects could be added. He will use sophisticated microphones to record the subtle sounds of the body. In some occasions, he even swallow microphone to record the sounds of his stomach. And he will amplify, overdub, edit the sounds to be able to record the microparticles of the voice. There were other sound poets that participated in poesy sonore, like Bernard Hedzik, introduced in his poem partitions everyday sounds recorded in the streets, in everyday life, to accompany his performances in which he performed very fast and quick sentences related to the sounds. It was a way to introduce society in his poems. To summarize, Letrism transcended the conventional alphabet, introducing new sounds, and that was an interesting innovation in the fragmentation of language. But doing so, they point out to the main contradiction that they were still using a limited, a finite number of sounds. That prompted some letrists to splinter and try to overcome this limitation, which they did through the use of raw vocal sounds and the use of technology. And that opened the door to Poesie Sonore, led by Henry Chopin, in which he only used the technology, the tape recorder and the microphone to record the subtle sounds of the voice. In doing so, liberating sound poetry completely from letters, words and language. And this is an example of high wall sound a rhythm by Francois Dufresne. <laughs> And this will be an illustration of how a piece by Henry Chopin will sound.